Matthew chapter 12, verse 34 from the authorized version of the scriptures. Oh, generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? And there is none good but who? Oh, those who save themselves, right, by just believing? There are none good besides who? Catholics, right, who do good things, right? Mm. Oh, generation of vipers. How can ye, being evil, speak good things? And there is none good but who? God. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Matthew chapter 15 now, verses 12 on to verse 20. Please, if you have an authorized version of the scriptures, you know the authorized version, which is perfect inerrant, given by inspiration. Matthew chapter 15, verses 12 on to verse 20. If you have an authorized version of the scriptures, please read along with me, word for word, verse by verse, what we will be looking at today. Read along with me. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily. What did these things be so? As I always tell you, not always, but a majority of the time tell you, Read along with me because the mouth goes quicker than the brain. Praise the Lord, brethren, when that happens, are in, quick on the, in the comment section. It's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> so, Matthew 15, verses 12 on verse 20. Then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? What is Pharisee? A Pharisee is someone who holds tradition above Scripture. Their tradition trumps Scripture, with every pun intended there. That's what a Catholic is, okay? A Catholic is a Pharisee, the modern equivalent thereof, I should say. But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind, and if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. A man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition reject. Hmm? Yeah. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Declare unto us this parable. And Jesus said, Are ye also yet without understanding? Do not ye yet understand that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out into the draught? But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts. Even thoughts can be sin. Murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witnesses, false witness, excuse me, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man. But to eat with unwashing hands defileth not a man. Evil thoughts, the thought of foolishness is sin. Murders. There are some people out there who have thought that it would be nice if he were just dead. People actually think that about me. <laughs> and there are a select few devils out there that I share the same sentiment with you. Yes. Because if I weren't here, I would be with the Lord. Yes. But see, I also, for some of you select devils out there who do nothing but cause problems... I think some of you are overdue to go to be where you need to go. That gives me no pleasure to say that. Brethren, people, there comes a time, there comes a time when you and I have to do just this, what verse 14 talks about. 
Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. But what happens when you have an antagonist who keeps probbing, proding, <laughs> or probbing, or whatever? <laughs> what happens? That they won't let things go. What happens when you come across people who thrive on that? I want to keep it going and going and going and going and going and going because it is what defines them. Old generation of vipers. I witnessed something last night. I actually sat and gave somebody my time. I hate golfing. I saw someone getting got taken advantage of by manipulation. What can and what can you do? What can what can I do? You can I can warn someone of this uh, thing, but they don't want to hear it. A certain select individual <coughs> manipulated and used another individual to stick up for him. I hate to see that, especially knowing the source that instigated it. Psalm 10. Psalm 10. I don't like seeing people getting taken advantage of. I, I, I hate that. I hate that. I hate that. But I also abhor. Remember, Paul tells us that we are to abhor that which is evil and to cleave to that which is good. What is good but God? But there are those out there who go after people who are a little bit more simple-minded. And put on the facade. And are false to the core, going to hell. But they use people to fight their battles for them. When they themselves are very capable. This is one of the reasons why I lost any ounce of respect for a certain individual. I'm not even going to go there. Um, from out northeast. Okay. A prominent King James Bible believing preacher. I lost all respect for that individual when he had someone else do his dirty work who himself is very capable of doing it, and used a young man as a sacrificial lamb. And you were sacrificed, kid. At least here on YouTube you were. Poor thing, you. Psalm 10, verses 4 and verse 15. The wicked through the pride of his countenance. Countenance is the bodily, visage is the face, remember. The wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. No, because they are their own God. They put themselves first. His ways are always grievous. Always grievous. There is nothing edifying in and of that individual. Nothing. Okay? Thy judgments are far above out of his sight. As for all his enemies, he puffeth at them. This is called the thing where fools rush in, where wise men dare to tread. Okay? He has said in his heart, I shall not be moved. Or, or, whoa, 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 let's read this verse. He has said in his heart, I shall not be moved. For I shall never be in adversity. 
I will be like the Most High. I will, I will, I will, I will, I will, right? Yeah. His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud. Under his tongue is mischief and vanity. Have you ever actually stopped and gave a listen to a lot of these fake gracers, the way they speak? Uh. Some, some of them outrightly use profanity. A fake gracer has no idea, no concept what actual grace is. They have no idea. Onto the fake gracer, grace is just a license for them. But there, I mean, I, there's that one guy, um, I'm not even going to say his name, I don't want to stay away from that twit, um, who um, openly will use profanity and is comfortable with those who use profanity. Huh. Yes, we slip. You might drop a couch on your toe. You might hit your hand with a hammer. Things slip. And we saints are mortified when these things come out from us. I hate golfing, by the way. But we, we're mortified. It's like, whoa! Oh! But see, with fake, they, they kind of, they just like, oh, don't worry about it. Yeah, I shouldn't have done it, but yeah. He sitteth in the lurking places of the villages. In the secret places doth he murder the innocent. His eyes are privily set against the poor, the downtrodden, the poor, the needy, the dependent upon Christ. See, these are the stronger people looking to exploit the weaker. He lieth in wait secretly as a lion in his den. Someone who is very capable of fighting his own battles, but wants to draw others in to fight on his behalf. He played you, man. He played you like a fiddle. Why didn't you say something, Brad? It would have fallen on deaf ears. It's already been proven to that effect. They don't want to hear it. Why cast your pearls before swine? He lieth in wait to catch the poor. He doth catch the poor when he draweth him into his net. Oh, that net. That facade of civility, of meekness, of a quiet countenance, of always using a very quiet tone of voice. He croucheth, he humbleth himself, that the poor may fall by his strong ones. And there it is. Someone who is very capable of fighting their own battles, but rather going to others to fight for them. I have zero respect for anyone like that. There are some of my enemies, some of them, who don't go that low. But there are a select few who do. And those are the ones who are calling everyone cowards, but they want to gather everybody together to fight their battles that they started. It's amazing. And the people who are behind this, he has said in his heart, God hath forgotten. He hideth his face. He will never see it. Arise, O Lord, O God, lift up thine hand, forget not the humble. Wherefore doth the wicked contemn God? He has said in his heart, Thou will not require it. Wait, they are their own God. <laughs> yeah. Thou hast seen it, for thou beholdest mischief and spite, to requite it with thy hand. 
The poor committeth himself unto thee. Thou art the helper of the fatherless. Break thou the arm of the wicked. Break thou the arm of the wicked and the evil man. Seek out his mischief till thou find none. Till thou find none? But yet, with a diligent search, the wickedness just keeps coming and coming. And the arm of the wicked, what is the arm of the wicked? The arm of man, the arm of flesh. It, it's, it's, it's disturbing to see that when strong ones go to those who are not that strong, who have whatever issues they are, and they play on their sentiments, they play on their emotions, okay? This spirit uh, descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. When it comes to truth, I don't care about your feelings. When it comes to truth, our brethren don't care about my feelings. Praise the Lord. Even though, like with Paul, it's like, I don't want to, but I got to. Look, I love you. See, a brother will take this. A sister will take this and smack me in the face if they got to. They will. They've done it. A brother or a sister, I'll take this and smack you in the face with it. If, if I got to, that's love. That's love. Love is telling the truth. Love is shooing people truth. Hate. Hate is allowing someone to go on and all the while they pisseth on their back and tell them, oh, it's raining. That's hatred. It's hatred to tell people to say, well, don't scare them. Don't tell them they ain't good. The fake gracer, which oversteps, leaps over scriptural brokenness because they have none. They skip over it. The, where are we do brokenness? Yeah. But see, they do it in a corporate corpse body. A corporate sense. They avoid the individuality of it. Every single time. Every single time. But see, there are those out there who take advantage of people and use them for this very purpose. And these people are disgusting. And when sometimes when you go to tell them the truth of these things, they don't want to hear it. Psalm 109. Psalm 109. Verses 1 on verse 20. Psalm 109. Verses 1 on verse 20. Come on. Hold not thy peace, O God of my praise. For the mouth of the wicked and the mouth of the deceitful are open against me. They have spoken against me with a lying tongue. They compassed me about also with words of hatred and fought against me without a cause. For my love, they are my adversaries, but I give myself on to prayer. See, a lot of people go to the Sermon on the Mount and to Romans chapter 12, okay? Especially they'll go to the Sermon on the Mount to love your enemies. How do you love your enemies? Okay? For my love, they are my adversaries, but I give myself on to prayer. They compass me, we're going working backwards here. They compass me about also with words of hatred and fought against me without a cause. When you tell someone the truth, the true gospel, 
that you need to be broken, contrite, and in fear of the Lord call upon his name that he may save you. When you tell them that truth, the truth, some of these people, they stop their ears and they gnash on you with their teeth. You show love to your enemies by telling them the truth. But that's not how it is today, is it? Verse 5. And they have rewarded me evil for good and hatred for my love. Hold your place and go to Psalm 35. Psalm 35. Psalm 35. This is not the set of scriptures I usually use. Psalm 35, verses 11 on to verse 21. False witnesses did rise up. They laid to my charge things I knew not. They rewarded me evil for good to the spoiling of my soul. Paul talks about in Romans chapter 12. Okay, if your enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him water to drink. For in so doing thou, thou shalt pour uh, heap hot coals upon his head. The Lord shall reward thee. Okay? How do you feed your enemy? Scripture. How do you how do you quench their thirst? Scripture. Okay? That's how you love your enemies. It is hate to your enemy. It is pure hate when you do not tell them the truth. But when you have already informed them on numerous occasions. And they still don't want to hear it. Brethren, hey, <laughs> there comes a time when you got to walk away and get away from them. My own brethren can testify to, uh, of me about that. I have given people way too many chances. And it has a lot of time bit me. Okay, oh yes. And even, and even my enemies know that about me. That I'm the one that is the one who is willing to extend the hand more often when other brethren are like, Brad, what is wrong? Why are you doing that? This guy is going to spit. At me. And then it happens and they're like, Brad, come on. And my brethren are right. But I remember where I came from. And I remember all the chances that the Lord gave me. Until I finally was broken. But there comes a time where you have to cut them off and go on. How do you know when that is? When you show them the true love of Scripture, the true love of our Lord Jesus Christ, warning them, admonishing them of the truth. And they refuse it. Refuse it. And refuse it. And refuse it. When most people would be like, you know, a couple times, like in Scripture, it's like, hey. But some of us, we, we want these people. We want to help these people. We want to see them be helped of the Lord. But no. They are their own gods. False witnesses did rise up. They laid to my charge things I knew not. They rewarded me evil for good to the spoiling of my soul. But as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. I humbled my soul with fasting, and my prayer returned into mine own bosom. I have behaved, I behaved myself as though he had been my friend or brother. I bow down heavily, heavily, as one that mourneth for his mother. But in mine adversity, they rejoiced and gathered themselves together. Yea, the abjects gathered themselves together against me, and I knew it not. They did tear me and cease not. With hypocritical mockers and feasts. They gnashed upon me with their teeth. Lord, how long wilt thou look on? Rescue my soul from their destructions. My darling, 
from the lions. I will give thee thanks in the great congregation. I will praise thee among much people. Let not them that are mine enemies rejoice, wrongfully rejoice over me. Neither let them wink with the eye that hate me without a cause. For they speak not peace. There is no fear of God before their eyes, man. They don't seek peace. When we speak, they are for war, aren't they? Yeah. For they speak not peace, but they dis dis devise deceitful matters against them that are quiet in the land. Yea, they open their mouth wide against me and said, Aha, aha, our eyes hath seen it. Go back now to Psalm 109. Let's pick up at verse 6. Set thou a wicked man over him, and let Satan stand at his right hand. That seems pretty cool, cruel, isn't it? Today we're supposed to be love unconditionally. <laughs> More on that in a bit. When he shall be judged, let him be condemned, and let his prayer become sin. Let his days be few and let another take his office. Reference on to the fall of Judas Iscariot. Okay. Let his children be fatherless and his wife a widow. Let his children be continually vagabonds and beg. Let them seek bread also out of their desolate places. Let the extortioner catch all that he hath. And let the stranger spoil his labor. These are the fruits of those who go after the, the flesh, not the spirit. Okay, these are some of the fruits of these things, okay? They're in the hand of a cruel Lord, okay? Let there be none to extend mercy unto him, neither let there be any to favor his, favor his fatherless children. Let his posterity be cut off, and in the generation following let their name be blotted out. Let the iniquity of his fathers be remembered with the Lord, and let not the sin of his mother be blotted out. This, this is a Psalm of David. Okay, He's addressing those who have made their choice. Paul says we are to abhor that which is evil and to cleave to that which is good when someone has made their choice and they have chosen contrary to the Lord and have chosen themselves, i.e. their father, the devil. They are our enemies. They have made their choice. We can't help that. The impossible is possible with God. Yes, it is. Is it probable? No. But see, that's between them and the Lord. Okay? There comes a time, people, when someone will go past the point of no return. The impossible is possible with God. Yes, it is. But the probability of someone, because remember, remember, God is not pointing a gun at anyone's head. Okay, neither is the devil. Okay? When someone has made their choice, knowingly, openly serving the devil and teaching, preaching, believing contrary to the word, rightly divided, that's when we got to leave him alone, brother. That hurts, especially when you care about people and you pray for them that their eyes be open and they keep falling into the same tricks. Hey, the one you are sticking up for and defending, he's not your friend. He's not your brother. I wish you would see that. The only love that man has is for, his, for himself. Let them be, be before the Lord continually, that he may cut off the memory of them from the earth, because that he remembered not to shew mercy, but persecuted the poor needy man, that he might slay the broken in heart. 
And that's what they're doing. That's what these people are doing when they use the weaker people. Okay? Weak in the faith. Maybe they're not all up there. Who knows? Maybe physically they're, they're weak or whatever. Maybe they're babes. The stronger hiding with a facade of humility, using others as pawns. Others who will not rightly know or be hip to know what's going on. I despise, I abhor people who do that to others. As he loved cursing, so let it come unto him. As he delighted not in blessing, so let it be far from him. As he clothed himself with cursing, as with his garment, so let it come into his bowels like water and like oil into his bones. Let it be unto him as the garment which covereth him. Yeah, because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Yes. And for a girdle wherewith he is girded continually. Let this be the reward of mine adversaries from the Lord and of them that speak evil against my soul. With some of these people, you can warn them. And they might have respite, but there is one thing we have to be uh, aware of, brethren. A hardened heart. For example, in Exodus chapter 8, verse 15, when Pharaoh saw that there was respite, deliverance, ease from something, he hardened his heart, as the Lord said. You can look that verse up on yourself, by yourself, okay? All right. Pharaoh, before the Lord started, you know, led him along, Pharaoh's heart was already hardened. Pharaoh already thought that he was a god, okay? The Lord just led him along in his own deception, okay? There are those who have made their choice, and even in the greatest of afflictions, they won't let themselves go unto the Lord. Perfect example unto you of this. Perfect, perfect example of a hardened heart. Jeremiah 44. You saints, you are very aware of this yourselves. Jeremiah 44, verses 16 on to verse 19. This is after Nebuchadnezzar whooped the snot out of Jerusalem. Gedaliah was killed by Ishmael. They went to Jeremiah and said, whatever the Lord says for you to tell us, we're going to do. Whatever it is. The Lord through Jeremiah said, don't go to Egypt. They say, the Lord didn't say for you to say that to us. We're going to Egypt anyway. They go to Egypt. After everything they were went through, they were warned about, they were warned, they were warned, they were warned, they had affliction upon affliction, they got a little respite, they got a little ease with Gedaliah. Ishmael came along, killed them, okay? They had respite. What did they do? They continued to believe in themselves, to trust their own judgments. Okay? <laughs> I mean, it, it, Jeremiah 43, okay? Jeremiah 43, uh, verses 2 and 3. Then spake Azariah the son of Hoshia, and Johanan the son of Kerah, and all the proud men, saying unto Jeremiah, Thou speakest falsely. The Lord our God hath not sent thee to say, Go not into Egypt to sojourn there. But Baruch, the son of Neriah, sent it thee on against us. For to deliver us into the hands the hand of the Chaldeans, that they might put us to death and carry us away captives into Babylon. Think about it. After everything that these guys went through, they still, even when they had were given moments of respite. How many times have some of these people have been admonished and shown truth? Sixteen on verse nineteen in Jeremiah forty-four. As for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the Lord, we will not hearken unto thee, but we will certainly do whatsoever thing goeth forth out of our own mouth to burn incense unto the Queen of Heaven, the Roman Catholic Mary, and to pour out drink offerings unto her as we have done. We and our fathers, our kings, and our princes in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. 
For then had we plenty of victuals, and were well in son of evil. But since we left off to burn incense to the Queen of Heaven, and to pour out drink offerings unto her, we have wanted all things, and have been consumed by the sword and by the famine. And when we burned incense to the Queen of Heaven, and poured out drink offerings unto her, did we make cakes to worship her, and pour out drink offerings unto her without our men? These are people that have already made their choice. They made their choice before they even went to Jeremiah. But see, what they were hoping for was that God would see it their way and go along with them. The problem that a lot of people have, myself included sometimes, Romans 15, verses 1 on to verse 3. Romans 15, verses 1 on to verse 3. We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Okay? But yet, what was the source of Paul's strength? His weakness. That don't make sense. I know, for you lost people, it doesn't. What is our strength, dear saints? It's the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Like Paul says in 2 Corinthians, okay? We've, we've addressed this Till you're blue in the face. We're going to do it again. Okay? 2 Corinthians 12. Verses 9. On to verse 10. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities and reproaches, in necessities and persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. See, you want to be strong in the Lord, you've got to be weak, not dependent on yourself. All these Christians are dependent on themselves. They're strong in themselves. They're, no, they're not weak. They're not weak. They prey upon those who are weak. We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to, pray, uh, not to please ourselves. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. That doesn't mean compromise. That doesn't mean tiptoe and not tell them the truth. Okay? For his good. What is good? God. Okay? For even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. But also, too, we have to keep in mind, brethren. We have to keep in mind. Psalm 82. Psalm 82. Psalm 82. I'll get there. Like I said, I'm not using the set of scriptures I usually use. Psalm 82. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judgeth among the little g gods. See, all these false religions that stem from Rome... What does it mean, you know, like right here? He judgeth among the gods. Ye shall be as gods. We, there's a video on the channel where we, we go through this, okay? Writing that down so I remember to put it in the description box, okay? But ye shall be, remember what Satan said unto Eve? Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil, meaning you can decide what is good and evil, apart from what God clearly says what is good and evil. Okay. How long will ye judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? Salah. Defend the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Deliver the poor and needy. Rid them out of the hand of the wicked. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. Hmm. They know not. Neither will they understand. 
It's not that they can't. It's that they choose not to. Why? Because they are gods. Little g. Knowing good and evil. They will be like the Most High. See? All of Christianity is like this. And the faith that was once delivered onto the saints is not Christianity. I don't care what you think about that. I have said, ye are gods, little g. And all of you are children of the Most High. But ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Rise, O God, judge the earth, for thou shalt inherit all nations. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil, judging, judging. Before the fall, there was no evil. All that was known was good, what was God. But after disobedience, it was works in the Garden of Eden, just like it will be works in the kingdom of heaven. Okay? All right? Before the fall, it was all good. But then, yea, hath God said? And now mankind judges for themselves. God has given us his truth. This is where we judge, what we judge, how we judge. You know, what we judge others off of, the scriptures, starting with ourselves. See? But, verse 7, But ye shall die like men, and fall like one of the princes. Very, very interesting. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Verses 2 under verse 4. When in times past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, wrath even as others. But God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved, past tense, us. Okay? Let's keep reading. Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace, unmerited favor, ye are saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might shew the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Jesus Christ. The prince of the power of the air. Hmm. Second Corinthians chapter 4. We've, we've covered this recently again, but it's covering it again. Because brethren, a lot of people don't want to hear the truth. And when you've warned people, you've warned them, and they still go on. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 7. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, the ministry of reconciliation, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Walking your talk. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Why is it with so many of these Christians, you can't distinguish them from the world? But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure, the Lord Jesus Christ, who lives in the saved, born again, converted believer. Okay? But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, 
that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. But see, we also have to keep in mind Galatians chapter 6, dear brethren. Galatians chapter 6, verses 1 under verse 5. Brethren, if any man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Tempted to be what? Puffed up? Thinking, well, I can, you know, I feel like Paul for all the people I've led to the Lord. Oh, shut up. You can get a little, uh, you know, patting yourself on the back. You see this as exemplified in a lot of these preachers nowadays, don't you? Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. See, that's, the, that's explaining verse 1. You know, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Okay, the Lord uses you mightily, uses you. At all, and you are aware of it, Ed? Paul had a thorn in his flesh to keep him humble. I have a thorn in my flesh to keep me humble. Okay? When the Lord uses you, it is very possible for it to go to your head. And we have to remember. For if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. But let every man prove his own work. Then shall he have rejoicing in himself and not in another. What does that mean? Am I doing this because I want to see the Lord glorified? Or that I want to make myself look good? For every man shall bear his own burden. In 2 Peter chapter 2. There comes a time, brethren, where we have to walk away and just let people go. And we, brethren, have to guard our own hearts from getting hardened. Okay? We have to guard ourselves against that. Because what happens? If you get too hardened, what happens? You'll, get, you'll give up. You'll get bitter. You'll assume that every single solitary situation, so well, it's not worth it. They're not going to believe anyway. You don't know who's listening. You don't know about a Saul who's holding people's jackets. We don't know these things. You can't give up like that. You can't allow yourselves to have your heart hardened. Okay, you have to be aware of that. And yes, our enemies exploit that. But see, you got to be on guard of being too soft, but you also have to be on guard of being too hardened. In 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 18 on to verse 22. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lusts of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were clean escape from them who live in error. Just believe and receive. No death to self. Just believe and receive. You can go on living just like you have been, but now it's even ten times better because you simply believe without any brokenness or contrition or fear of the Lord. Yeah, none of that there. No, you just believe so you can go about and walk on your merry way. I hate every false way. I do. Fake grace is a false way, therefore I hate it. And you know what? I hate the people who promote it. You know why? Because they, they are the enemies of our Lord Jesus Christ. Grace unto them is like an adornment or a sticker that they can put on and put off. It's a license to do whatever they want to do. 
They have no concept of what grace truly is. Therefore, since they are the enemy of my Lord, they are my enemy. Yeah. And you saints, they ought to be yours too. You can show them love by telling them the truth, but those who teach this heresy? Yeah. While they, while they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same as he brought in bondage. For if, after they have escaped the pollutions of the world, through the knowledge, knowledge, knowing, wisdom, the fear of the Lord. Wisdom, the fear of the Lord, is the stepping stone to knowledge, knowing. Okay? For if they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. Why? For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. What we looked at in Jeremiah is an example. Okay? They were told, don't go to Egypt. They went to Egypt. Okay? They went to Egypt. Perfect example of it. Okay? You have to be broken in order to be fixed. But no. No, people say they skip over the hard stuff, which is a necessity, which is needful, and just go straight to the easy thing and make so many false converts. Yeah. You know, the saying, ignorance is bliss. But see, when these people stand before the Lord at the great white throne of uh, judgment, there will be no ignorance. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dog, male, is turned to his, male, own vomit again, and the sow, female, that was washed to her, female, wallowing in the mire. You can tell people the truth. They'll hear it. They won't listen. Or vice versa. But they still want to go in on their way, the way they were doing, the way of flesh. Matthew chapter 14. Or excuse me, Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10, verses 14 on to verse 18. Matthew chapter 10, verses four, 14 on to verse 18. And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your words, when ye depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust of your feet. Don't waste your time with people who don't want to hear it. If they don't want to hear it, give them ample opportunity. Yes, you know, as the Lord leads, of course. But brethren, you know, you will know when someone doesn't want to hear it. That's when you got to get away from them. It's sad. But there is a time when you have to cut people loose and just go on. And see, a lot of our enemies who keep going and going and going and going and thrive off of that stuff. <clears throat> and whosoever shall not receive you nor hear your words when ye depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust of your feet. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment for that city. Behold, I send you forth as sheaves, sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents, be aware of what the enemy is doing, okay? And harmless as doves, don't use the enemy's weapons to fight for truth. Don't fight fire with fire. Because I tell you, when you fight fire for, with fire, fire is going to win. 
But you, hey, remember, yours burns more hotter, doesn't it? Okay? But beware of men, mere men. Yeah. For they will deliver you up to the councils, and they will scourge you in the, their synagogues, and ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. Whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, they, for they are a rebellious house. Ezekiel 2, just going over this real quickly. Ezekiel 2, verses 4 on to verse 8. For they are an impudent, for they are impudent children and stiff hearted. I do send thee unto them, and thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God. And they, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are a rebellious house, yet shall know that there hath been a prophet among them. And thou, son of man, be not afraid of them, neither be afraid of their words, though briars and thorns be with thee. And thou dost dwell among scorpions, be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. And thou shalt speak my words unto them, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are most rebellious. But thou, son of man, hear what I say unto thee. Be not thou rebellious like that rebellious house. Open thy mouth and eat that I give thee. See, just because, you know, you know we're not absolved from not telling people who don't want to hear it the truth. Okay? If you come, you know, witnessing to people, they, they don't want to hear it, but they need to hear it. And if they don't want to hear it, they've at least heard it. Okay? But see, it's when we want to, out of our flesh, persist in making someone hear, that's when we run into problems. That's when we run into problems. I have done that so many times. And over the years, I've learned and I'm learning to back away. Back away. Okay? And how will you know? Well, scriptures give us quite a few examples. For example, go to 2 Chronicles 19. 2 Chronicles 19. Okay? 2 Chronicles 19. Verses 1 on to verse 3. And Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, returned to his house in peace to Jerusalem. And Jehu, the son of Hanani, the seer, went out to meet him and said to King Jehoshaphat, Shouldest thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Therefore is wrath upon thee from before the Lord. Now some will like to say, well, this is a contradiction for us today. And they go to the Sermon on the Mount. You know, love your enemies, do good to those who persecute you. Why is that? Because the Lord is going to be on the earth physically, and they're going to be judged of the Lord personally. A totally different dynamic in the kingdom of heaven, okay, where it's all works. Today, we show love unto our enemies by telling them the truth, okay? But when you have these people who have made their choice and are ungodly and... Shouldest thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Therefore is wrath upon thee from before the Lord. When people have made their choice and will not hear truth and hate the truth and want to go after what Satan gives them, that's what that's talking about. When someone has made their choice Leave them alone. Get away from them. Go to the next city. Go on. Okay? Don't be fixated on someone who doesn't want it. Verse 3. Nevertheless, there are good things found in thee, in that thou hast taken away the groves out of the land and hast prepared thine heart to seek God, individual, during a different dispensation where it was faith and works. Eternal security was not there, okay? 1 Samuel 15. 1 Samuel 15. 
There comes a time, brethren, where we have to walk away from people. It hurts, but there comes that time when we have to. They just don't want to hear it. It's like, look, dude, I'm giving you the truth. I've warned you. I've prayed for you. I've shown you the love of the Lord by telling you the truth from Scripture, and you just don't want to hear it. I can't be around you. I can't help you, man. Got to Bye. Go on. See ya. 1 Samuel 15, verses 10 and 11. Saul, King Saul, disobeyed the Lord. Then came the word of, of the Lord unto Samuel, saying, It repenteth me. Repent. And remember uh, the very first appearance of the word re repent, uh, which is found in Genesis? Uh, grief. Grief is a part of repentance. Okay? It repenteth me that I have set up Saul to be king, for he has turned back from following me, and hath not performed my commandments. And it grieved, see again, verse 11 there, repenteth and grieved, okay? See the tie-in? And it grieved Samuel, and he cried unto the Lord all night. Verse 35 in First uh, First Samuel 15. And Samuel came no more to see Saul until the day of his death. Nevertheless, Samuel mourned for Saul. And the Lord repented that he had made Saul over Saul king over Israel. Samuel was very bothered about Saul. He was. One second, please. Excuse me. Yes, Samuel mourned for Saul. 1 Samuel 16, verse 1. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill thine horn with oil and go. Go to the next one. I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. It is sad. It is sad when people don't want to hear the truth and you mourn for them, but we have to get over it. We have to get over it. We have to continue. You know, we're still here on earth. There's still work for the body of Christ to do. In witnessing and ministering. Okay? Don't give up. Don't quit. Don't let your heart be hardened. So that guy doesn't want to hear it. You've pleaded. You've prayed. Shoulder to shoulder. Gone through scripture. And they are still making the dumb, stupid decisions. They don't want to hear it. Comes a time, brethren, we have to walk away and go to the next one. 2 Samuel 19, verse 1 on verse 8. This is interesting because this is after the revolt of Absalom, okay? Absalom, the son of David, okay? Look. What, pay attention to this, because look who is doing the rebuking here. And Absalom got killed. King David's like, hey, don't kill Absalom. Be kind to him for my sake. And Joab's like, hey, kill this guy. Joab. Joab, you know, honorable Joab. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. But King David... Wanted Absalom alive, and let's and um, let's read in Second uh, Samuel eighteen to start. Uh, actually, let's read verses thirty two and thirty three. And the king said unto Cushai, "Is the young man Absalom safe?" 
And Cushai answered, Enemies of my lord the king, and all that rise against thee to do thee hurt, be as that young man is, dead. Now, Absalom was King David's son. I, I, absolutely, he mourned for his son. Absolutely. And the king was much moved and wept and went up to the chamber over the gate and wept. And as he went, thus he said, Oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, would God I had died for thee, O oh, Absalom, my son, my son. Why was it so bitter for him? Well, because number one, you got to remember the sin with Bathsheba. God still used David, but he paid a heavy price. His own son betrayed him. His own son. And before that, Amnon raped his sister, his half-sister, Tamar. Okay? So David was also grieved because he was also aware he had a part in it. Keep that in mind. And it was told Joab, chapter 19, verses 1 and verse 8 now. And it was told Joab, Behold, the king weepeth and mourneth for Absalom. And the victory that day was turned into mourning unto all the people. For the people heard say that day how the king was grieved for his son. And the people got them by stealth that day into the city. As people being ashamed steal away when they flee to battle and flee in battle. But the king covered his face, and he and the king cried with a loud voice, O oh, my son Absalom, O oh, Absalom, my son, my son. And Joab, a devil. And Joab came into the house of the king and said, Thou hast shamed this day the faces of all thy servants, which this day have saved thy life, and the lives of thy sons and of thy daughters, and the lives of thy wives and the lives of thy concubines, in that thou lovest thine enemies and hatest thy friends. For thou hast declared this day that thou regardest neither princes nor servants, for this day I perceive that if Absalom had lived, and all we had died this day, then it had pleased thee well. Now therefore arise, go forth, and speak comfortably unto thy servants. For I swear by the Lord, if thou go not forth, there will not tarry one with thee this night. And that will be worse unto thee than all the evil that befell thee from thy youth until now. Then the king arose and sat in the gate, and they told on and they told unto all the people, saying, Behold, the king doth sit in the gate. And all the people came before the king. Israel had fled every man to his tent. He had every right to mourn for his son. But Joab had to rebuke the king, King David, for exactly that same reason. It was of the Lord. It was the Lord's judgment against David. Yes, David was broken up over it, but Joab spoke the truth to David. There comes a time, brethren, even though you love, you've mourned, you've wept for someone, they just don't want to hear it, and they're going to choose contrary, even though it hurts. Jeremiah 7. Jeremiah 7, verses 16 on to verse 9. 19, excuse me. Jeremiah 7, verses 16 on to verse 19. 16 on to verse 19. When someone makes their choice and they just don't want to hear it. Now Paul talks about pray for all people, right? Right? Why? So that we may live a peaceable and quiet life that we may do the work of the Lord unhindered, right? That's why, okay? But when you have a nation that has chosen contrary to the Lord, when you have people that have chosen contrary, have made their choice, therefore, 
Pray not thou for this people, neither lift up cry nor prayer for them, neither make intercession to me, for I will not hear thee. Seest thou not what they do in the cities of Judah and the streets of Jerusalem? The children gather wood. Women rule, children are your oppressors, and women rule over you. The children gather wood, and the fathers kindle the fire, and the women knead their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven. And to pour out drink offerings unto other gods, that they may provoke me to anger. Do they provoke me to anger, saith the Lord? Do they not provoke themselves to the confusion of their own faces? They've made their choice. And with the majority of these people that have made their choice. The impossible is possible with God, yes. They've gone past that point. Unless they're put on a sinking submarine. Comes a time when we have to let go. And move on. Jeremiah 11 verses 13 and 14. For according to the number of thy cities were thy gods, O Judah... And according to the number of the streets of Jerusalem, have ye set up altars to that shameful thing, even altars to burn incense unto Baal? Look at America. Therefore pray not thou for this people, neither lift up a cry or prayer for them, for I will not hear them in the time that they cry unto me for their trouble. John 17, then we'll be done. John 17. The true Lord's Prayer. The true, the real Lord's Prayer. John 17, verses 9 on to verse 19. I pray for them. I pray not for the world. Don't look at me. Look at the verse. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they, for they are thine, and all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father. Keep thou thine own name, Keep through, excuse me, thine own name, those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. And there is only one name given among men under heaven, whereby we must be saved in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. One name. Whose name? Whose name? Huh? Whose name? Jesus Christ. Okay? While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. And Jesus does mean Jehovah saves. Okay? Those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition. Judas Iscariot, that the scripture might be fulfilled. And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in them. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them. Because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Hold your place really quick and go to 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4. Okay. First John chapter four, verse uh, five and six. 
They are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. Haven't you all figured it out by now? The Christianity that is being preached is worldly. It's all about you. Haven't you figured that out yet? We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Go back to John chapter 17. Verse 14 again. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. We are in the world, remember. We are not of the world. Christianity is of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Which one? The originals. Oh, you mean the originals that were actually penned by Isaiah, by Joel, by David? Those don't exist. Oh, the original languages. Oh, the original Hebrew, the original Greek. Which one? Huh? You can take your the originals argument and wipe your rear end with it. Okay? The originals don't exist anymore. Okay? They don't. And who, and who decides what is truth? The Jesuit scholars? <laughs> Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I, have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Hmm. Like I said, I, I saw something last night that just just broke my heart in a way because of somebody who was used and taken advantage of. He did, you know, who rebuked a devil he did but the individual used him as a weapon instead of him doing it himself took advantage it's sad brethren that we're in a day and age where the redemption of the purchased possession draweth nigh we don't know when but it could happen at any moment. And it hurts us. It's painful when you come across people who just won't hear it. But we have to be aware, brethren, that especially in the times that we live, there comes a point where we have to walk away and just hand them over. It's like, look, man, you don't want to hear it. You want nothing to do with the truth. You don't want to hear the truth. You refuse to accept the truth. But you go after your father, the devil. May the Lord have mercy on your soul. And go on to the next one. And until you're dead, or until we're taken up, there's still work to be done for the Lord. Don't quit! Don't give up. Let us guard our hearts. Because it's really easy to become bitter and hard-hearted. And if that happens to you, try to remember where you were. Like it says in Ephesians chapter 2, that you were sometimes disobedient yourself. And remember the mercy and the grace that our Lord had on you. It's going to be it for this little video. Thank you for watching this if you do. Thank you. Uh, I love you. Thank you for those of you who pray for us and help us. 
and you know what, To First, I want to end with this verse of Scripture from 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15. I can't see that. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. First Corinthians chapter 15. Hmm. Verses 57 and 58. But thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. That's all we got to say about that.